Greetings students and welcome to the Professor Travel. I am the Professor Travel. This is the site where you go to learn more about various different destinations you'd like to travel to. We, talk, we come together as community in order to be able to discuss those destinations, travel to them, and then of course share your enjoyment with the rest of the community. Um, you can always reach me on social media. Um, I can be available at my website, which is theprofessortravel.com. You can find me on YouTube at theprofessortravel.com over there. Uh, same with Facebook and Instagram. On Twitter, I'm available at theprofessortr1 and at blogspot at theprofessortravel.blogspot.com. Today, we have a very exciting guest. We have a visiting professor, Bill Perry. Say hi to everybody, Bill. Hello, everybody. Hey. Um, so, Bill, uh, talk to us a little bit about your credentials and maybe some places that you've traveled before. Well, um, as far as credentials go, what, what do you want to know? Uh, just uh, like maybe some of your educational credentials, like what, what kind of degree? Stuff, I, well, I, uh, I got my undergrad in business. Uh, my first master's was in psychology and second was in education to focus on adult education and corporate training. Fantastic. And you've traveled to a few places all over the world, haven't you? Yeah, we've been uh, we've been to quite a few places actually. Excellent. What have been some of your favorite spots that you've been to in the past? Well, I'd say uh, number one is Japan. Mm. Uh, that that one's uh, real close to my heart. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have any material for that one. We didn't we didn't uh, video it. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so maybe uh, maybe another video for that one. Or maybe we just have to go and do that all over again. Maybe we just have to take another a, a trip to Japan in the relative future. You know what I'm saying? That'd be a good reason. Exactly. <laughs> now, for the purpose. No, exactly. So, for purpose of this video, we were going to focus on Italy. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah, awesome. that's the place we went to uh, last year. Oh, wonderful. So, how long did you spend in Italy? We were there for uh, 22 days. 22 days. That was. It sounds. Now, did you guys? fly into Italy directly or did you uh, fly somewhere first and then go to Italy after that? Yeah, yeah, we went um, from Phoenix to Washington, D.C., from D.C. to Frankfurt, Germany, and then to Venice, Italy. Sonia is uh, the travel guru. She, she's got it down. She will find the cheapest flight. Uh, so you, you may have to circumvent, <laughs> you know, go, go different uh, <laughs> But ways to get there, but it's going to be the uh, the cheapest at the highest quality, um, you know. Now, get. for my viewers, tell us who Sonia is, just so they know. Yeah, Sonia is my fiance okay. and my travel partner, and we uh, we run the Weeby travel site on YouTube. Excellent, and we're going to get to the link in just a couple of minutes as well. Uh, so let me start by asking you a little bit about this it uh, this trip to Italy. How long did you start? planning this trip ahead of time? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, Sonia started over a year before we decided, you know, before our, our uh, flight left. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, she uh, spent just about every day for a year planning, uh, researching, and uh, figuring out the best times of the year to go, you know, what's happening at different times of the year, when was the busy season, when's off season. Uh, we did kind of focus uh, on that. Uh, most of the places we go, we, we try to go in the off season. Now you also go, I'm oh, sorry, I, go ahead. I'm sorry. I no, 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 no problem. Uh, that way we, we miss the big tourist uh, crowds and we get to see a little more of the, uh, the local culture for what it is. Yeah. Which is why we go. Did you find that when you went, was there a lot of tourists there or was the weather a challenge when you went there? Well, luckily, um, we really did luck out because there was uh, Venice was flooding completely for uh, uh, a couple weeks before we went, and and uh, it cleared up about two days before we we flew there. So we we did get lucky. Oh, nice! I think they call it the Agua Alta is when the Venice starts to take on water. <laughs> yeah, this was different. This was a this was a, a, a negative event. You know, they got way too much water, um, and it, it was a big, it was a big issue. Oh, man. But, uh, luckily, it cleared up. So the Agua Alta is something we'll talk about later on, too. It's uh, pretty amazing, and it happens, uh, you know, in, in the middle of the city, kind of flood, <laughs> and even the shops flood. Yeah. Uh, everybody just kind of goes about their business with it. Yeah, it's kind of a chill thing they're used to. They've been used to it for centuries, I guess. So. Right. Yeah. Now, 
I, I recently traveled to Italy myself, and I know from my experience that I didn't need to have a visa or like travel medications like you would do when you travel to India or to Africa or anything like that. Was there anything that you guys needed uh, specifically ahead of time in preparation for this at all? No, I mean, you know, of course you always want to make sure your passport's, uh, you know, valid. <laughs> you don't have to, yeah. to really do it. Yeah. Ours is uh, coming up here. We, we got to get it done before we go to our next uh, destination this year. Oh, um, where is that by the way? That's going to be Thailand in December. Nice. Right. So we do travel uh, with some medication. Um, Sonia puts together a, a pill box and we have uh, antacids uh, like Zantac, um, uh, digestive uh, enzymes, things like that for your tummy, make your tummy feel better, <laughs> especially if you're getting food you're not used to. Uh, you know, Tylenol, uh, cold remedy, which is great especially like some strong stuff, you know, Mucinex or something. Like I, I got really sick last four days of our Italy trip uh -huh. and those things were, they kept me going. So it, it's nice to have all that. Did you guys take anything like airborne ahead of time, just to, like before the flight and just to make sure you were adjusted or, or is that kind of just like? No, no, we didn't, we didn't do that. Uh, I, a lot of people do though. And I think it's a pretty good idea. Okay, cool. So let's talk about the actual coming up of the event. So you're getting ready for vacation. You're starting to repack uh, your stuff. What kind of stuff did you bring during this trip? Um, not, not just clothing, but like uh, sun, sun protection and stuff like that. Anything specific? Well, Sonia lives and dies by sunscreen. Um, and she makes sure that I, I put it on. <laughs> when we're, I'll forget, of course. But uh, yeah, when we pack, we pack normal stuff. Um, try to keep it light. But, you know, she's a photographer, I'm her assistant, and we're going to be, you know, videoing and taking lots of pictures. So we had a lot of gear. So if it wasn't for all the camera stuff, we would probably be considered light packers. Um, you know, just taking the basic stuff and the, you know, the medications and whatnot that we take, maybe a couple pairs of shoes. We're going to an opera. So we made sure we took some nice clothes and dress shoes and so forth. Wow. Um, Certain things like toiletries, you can buy there. So why even weigh yourself down? You know, you can buy toothpicks, toothbrushes, toothpaste, and glosses and stuff. Do you uh, buy more expensive there, over there though? Or? No, no. I mean, they're, they're pretty cheap items wherever you go in the world. So, okay. you know, like why weigh yourself down is the way, the way we look at it. Okay. So for your flights, you, I assume, left out of Sky Harbor Airport. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you flew to DC first. What airline did you fly on for that? What is United? It was United. Okay, yeah. perfect. And did you also use United from there to Frankfurt? We sure did. Yeah, we okay. used United uh, the entire way, actually. Okay. So, yeah. how was your experience? I mean, did you fly coach? Did you fly premium? Did you fly anything higher than that? Or did you just kind of keep it? Good, good question. Uh, Sonia upgraded to uh, some premium seats. And I actually got upset because I didn't think the seats were very premium. <laughs> they seem pretty normal coach to me. So mm -hmm. I was a little, uh, I was a little annoyed with the United's premium. Yeah. So I was you, you say, take a gamble with that stuff, you know? Did you um, actually use points to do that or did you have to pay cash to do that directly? Oh, it was cash. Okay. All right. So you didn't think it was really worth it? No, it was like an extra 300 bucks and I didn't think the seat was much different. Oh man. It depends on the plane, you know? Uh, that's one thing we've noticed traveling all over is, is uh, some planes, it, and they could be the same airline. It's just that particular plane is a little bit more spacious mm -hmm. or has better seats. And you just, like I said, you roll the dice when you, when you pay for some upgrades sometimes. And uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like the premium <laughs> on this one. Now, um, that's a relatively long flight. Did, how was the entertainment on board? Did you have Wi-Fi or anything like that? Yeah, it was good. And uh, we actually downloaded um, the United app. Mm -hmm. And uh, that way you can watch whatever you want, like on our uh, iPads. Oh, nice. Yeah. So oh. we could watch movies all the way there. And it had a huge selection. You could watch uh, television if you wanted to. Uh, they had a large music selection. There were some games and stuff in there too as well. Did you yeah. guys find it difficult to sleep on the flight at all? Or, cause I know sometimes when, like, at least for me, 
when I try, for, and I don't, maybe I'm just insane, I don't know. When I'm traveling eastbound, I have a problem with sleeping. When I'm traveling westbound, like to Hawaii or Thailand or something like that, I don't have a problem with sleeping. I don't know what it is. Interesting. Uh, I can't sleep either way. Oh, okay. So yeah, I can't sleep at all on the plane. Uh, Sonya sometimes can can doze off a little bit, but for the most part, we're, we're very much awake. That's and the only east-west difference I feel is, uh, you know, the jet lag. Mm -hmm. When I come back, you know, east to west, I get jet lag big time, but uh, you know, from west to east, I don't feel it at all. Okay. So. Now, did you have someone drop you off at Sky Harbor or did you guys park there? Yeah, yeah, her uh, uh, son, Dylan, uh, he drops us off. So oh, okay, cool. Don't have to worry about parking or, uh, you know, paying a couple hundred bucks for, you know, yeah. Okay. Which I've done in the past and, you know, I mean, if you have no choice, or if you just want the convenience of being able to get it into your own car and, and leave when you come back, I guess it's worth it. But if you have plenty of friends, then they'll always help you out. Yeah. I mean, we live in Orange County. And so for us to fly out of LAX, it's about 50 miles. So I, I don't really want to trouble my friends too much about that. So I always look into parking options over there. And I say friends for. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Well, my sister doesn't live too far from there, so it's like, well, maybe I should hit her up on something like that. But it's like, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to be that that brother, you know. You got to return the favor, but uh, it's true. definitely worth it. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, now, when you were in either Washington or Frankfurt, did you have any uh, like pre-vacation destination time over? Like, did you have to, like, did you have downtime at either of those locations like, where you had to have a hotel or anything like that? Like layovers. Yeah. Um, no, not enough to where we were able to leave. Uh, the, the hotel. I mean, in previous flight, flights we've, uh, or trips, we've planned that mm -hmm. to where, like, let's say we're stopping in San Francisco on our way somewhere, you know, there's places there we really like to go have lunch. So we'll, we'll plan a layover there. Sonia's really good at that stuff. Nice. Um, but for this one, no, we, we weren't able to leave the airport, which would have been cool to kind of, you know, drive around in uh, Germany a little bit, but yeah. Nope. Okay. So um, you arrive in Italy. Um, where did now? Did you fly into Venice directly? Did you fly into a different location? Yeah, yeah. We we flew into Venice. Um, what is the name of the airport there? Was it have, Marco Polo? That's it. Yeah, you got yeah. it. Nice. <laughs> well, I, I was just there, so I mean, I totally understood. It's like it, it was. It's like one of the cooler airports because you've got water taxis that'll bring you really close to there. So it's kind of neat. So, at least for me, I thought it was an interesting airport, you know, unlike most of the other ones that I've been to in the past. Um, so, how long were you in Venice before embarking to the different destination locations that you went to? Yeah, we were in Venice for three days. Okay. And uh, there we stayed, um, like I said, Sonia's travel guru. So, for all the planning, she found an apartment that was for rent. Oh, cool. Yeah, and there's a very nice couple, and I, I can't remember their names, but uh, uh, very sweet people. And they had uh, a restaurant, I mean, a restaurant, they had an apartment right in the middle of Venice. Oh, and, wow. Uh, I'll give them a shout out, because it's called The Residence on the Laguna. Nice. And uh, I mean, this place was fantastic. It was a nice, uh, like, two-bedroom apartment. And uh, when you looked out the window, like there was canals right under the window, gondolas going by, you know, there's a little bridge there, people sitting on the corner singing. It's, I mean, it was fantastic. How close were you to St. Mark's Square? Really close, like a, uh, I don't know, five, 10 minute walk. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So it's right. Do you, guys, do you guys have air conditioning? Yeah, we did actually. Okay. Yeah. I know not a lot of places do, but this this was a nicer place. I, I sure did. Okay, excellent. So you were there for about three days. Um, hopefully you had some good food while you were there. I know that's one of the things that Venice is really known for. For what? Say it again. Oh, I, I was hoping that you guys may have had some good food while you were there. I know that's one thing that Venice is known for. Well, you know what? I, I, not to disagree with the, the professor travel, <laughs> but uh, in our experience, Venice was one of the weaker food destinations in Italy. Mm, now, interesting. I'm saying a lot. I mean, Italy is probably the greatest food destination on the planet. So 
you know, if you're the, the weakest place in Venice, you're still pretty good. You're better than any place in the States, probably, you know? <laughs> That's true. Uh, but yeah, the, there wasn't a, a, a ton of locations in, in, um, in Venice that were amazing. You know, okay. nothing stood out there for sure. But there okay. was some good food, yeah. All right. We, we tried to make sure we ate where, where the locals ate too. Um, yeah, that's one thing I want to touch on really quick because I know a lot of places, and, and for, for your novice travelers who may be watching this channel, they may not understand the whole concept of why would I, why wouldn't I want to eat where the big tourist destinations are? Why would I want to eat where the locals eat? Yeah, and, and I'll tell you why. Yeah, um, please, if you don't mind. Please. Um, the tourist destinations, they know you're a tourist. You know, they know you're not a discerning Italian diner who's used to this amazing food. You don't get the same quality and you don't get the same care uh, that they prepare the food with. And we did eat at a couple of touristy spots just because we were hungry. You know, for example, there's a restaurant right across the canal from where we were staying. And one night we we're like, yeah, let's just go try this place. And it was not good, mm -hmm. you know, compared to the place uh, where the locals sent us. Um, so actually the lady that rented us the apartment told us where she likes to eat. And, uh, and we went there and it was delicious, you know. Excellent. The definite difference. So, you know, get off the beaten path when it comes to the food there. I have found, at least when our recent trip was to Venice, I had, I, I had kind of a mixed bag. I had the places where I paid on the cheap, it felt like I got almost like microwave pizza. <laughs> and then the places where I paid a little bit more money, I found that the cuisine was fantastic. Uh, like there was this place right near the Rialto Bridge. Uh, and there's a lot of them that are like right there because it's a big touristy spot we had just amazing food that was there. Um, which again, I think brings up another topic that I think I talked to you about as well, which is um, understanding what your budget is in reference to the dining experience, because that can have a real big impact on exactly what that experience is going to look like. Would you agree? Absolutely. Uh, when, I, when, when you go to my advice to anybody, especially going to Italy, is plan ahead and uh, don't be cheap when it comes to the food, you know? I mean, don't be afraid to stop and eat something, you know, especially if, if you're intrigued by a little food stand or something, give it a shot, but uh, don't shy away from, from nicer places because that's where you're really gonna experience, uh, you know, the full flavor of Italy. And uh, speaking of Rialto Bridge, mm -hmm. there are a lot of little touristy spots around it, but if you go, you know, a few blocks away, down through some of the alleys, you'll find the best place we had uh, in Italy is called Aqua and Mice. I might be butchering some of these uh, names, but I'm, I'm American. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I speak Spanish, not Italian. And there's oh. a big difference, which I'll, I'll mention later. But uh, yeah, this place was like um, a fried fish stand. Hmm. You can get a you know, a variety of fried seafood items. And it's kind of, you know, everyday working man's type place. And it was the best food we had in Venice. Absolutely. Nice. Now you were there for three days. Tell me a little bit about what your itinerary looked like after that, after those three days. Well, there's a couple things we did. If you don't mind me going, uh, telling about what we did in Venice. Of course. Um, because uh, we did go to St. Mark's Square, of course. Everybody's got to go. That's the place, of, you know, with the pigeons that you see in everybody's travel photos where they're standing there like this and pigeons are all over them. And there are a ton of pigeons. There's also a ton of uh, street merchants. And they are super aggressive. And uh, a, lot of them time, a lot of times they don't take no for an answer. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to, to tell them no. And you might have to get a little rude to to get some of them to stop, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, but they're selling everything there is to sell. <laughs> you know, scarves, phone chargers, uh, little toys that they throw up in the air and they light up, or, you know, roses. Roses guys are the worst. Mm. <laughs> you know, stick a rose in your, your uh, partner's face, <laughs> you know, and try to get you to buy it. Uh, people come up and take pictures uh you know of you and then sell them to you you know things like that so be oh. prepared for that uh but there's also the uh the doge's palace there mm, yeah. 
and uh, we took what's called the secret itineraries tour. And the Doge is the name of the, the ruler, I guess, kind of a symbolic ruler of Venice back in ancient times. They're largely a figurehead. They ruled for life, so they typically picked an older person, you know. And uh, uh, yeah, they were they were the figurehead of, of, of Venice there, but they had like their jail under the Doge's palace. So that's the tour we took and, and showed uh, the accommodations and where they were torturing. Accommodations? People. Yeah, yeah, it was, rough. <laughs> it was rough. Like you could imagine being stuck in there in, in one of those uh, cells and yeah. Pretty tough. So it, that was cool. Um, we also went after that and did, um, uh, Venice is known for, uh, it's called a chiquete, I believe is, is what you call it. It's like tapas, right? They're hors d'oeuvres, you know, one bite type uh, meals. You can go kind of hang out at uh, these places and chill out, drink with your friends and, and have uh, you know, check out these, these little bite-sized uh, things. And that's, that's a pretty cool uh, experience there. So definitely recommend looking up, you know, check out the bars there. Nice. Um, and then, of course, we did, the coolest thing we did there was the gondolas. And I know some people think, ah, oh, that sounds cheesy and just super touristy. And no, man, it's not. It was super romantic. And just a wonderful, wonderful experience. You know, we we all grow up hearing about this magic city that's floating, you know, on the water, and their streets are water, and you know what I mean. And, and to to go there and experience it was, was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And I, I talked a lot with the gondolier about just local stuff, you know, and found out just certain things like the gondoliers are all Venetians. Mm. You know, you have to be a Venetian to be able to be a licensed gondolier and it's something to kind of give back to the city you know and they they make a pretty good living that way and they do and in fact when i was there i remember that you couldn't really negotiate because the prices were all standardized for the gondolas yeah yeah i think yeah pretty much and it depends on the time of day too so you'll get a better price towards the end of the day ah okay yeah so we waited till a little bit later and i think we got one for 60 bucks oh yeah that's that's a little bit better. I think they're like normally like $80 each. Yeah. Yeah. And we noticed that too. So uh, someone had tipped us off about it. So <laughs> cool. What else did you do while you were in Venice? Uh, Venice. Well, we, we, we took a day trip to this, uh, this island called Burano. Oh yeah. Right across the way. Right. This place is amazing. Like it's a very, very colorful place. All the homes there, it's a law that their homes have to be colored differently, right? And they're all bright colors, yeah. you know, red, yellow, blue, green, purple, pink. Uh, and there, there's a bunch of different theories on why, uh, but some of the coolest ones were like, it's for the, the fishermen, because it's a fishing village. So they can be able to identify their home in the fog. Uh, another one was, like their boat, the color of the boat matched the color of the home. And if something happened out at sea, they knew which family to go to. You know, a lot, a lot of little urban legends like that. Mm. Uh, but we had the best risotto in Italy there on that island. Uh, one of the uh, uh, Michelin star restaurants we went to. As I was telling you before, uh, before we started talking to the viewers, uh, we went to about 18 Michelin star restaurants and that was one of our main focuses in this trip. Uh, so to experience Italy, you know, all they have to offer as far as food goes, right? And uh, that one there, it was called uh, Trattoria de Primo. And the lady that uh, runs it, again, I don't remember her name, she was really sweet, but uh, we got this shrimp risotto that blew me away. It's, I mean, I, I still think about it. <laughs> I still dream about that, that risotto. It oh, was, no. It's going to haunt me forever. <laughs> so I would say it's worth it to a trip to that island just for that. I want to ask two, or I have one statement really quick, and then I have a follow-up question for you. Sure. As far as the statement goes, uh, to my viewers, there is a definite difference between the island of Burano 
and Murano, which is a yeah. different island. And that's the one where they produce a lot of the Murano glass, which is designer glass that's just done there in Venice. That's right. And, and we so, didn't decide which one we were going to go to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, whether we want to watch the glass blowing or we wanted to go to the colorful, you know, house fishing village. And, and we decided on Burano. Now, do they produce lace on Burano? Was that the thing that they do over there as well? Yeah, they do. They do. There's, a, there's a lot of shops, uh, you know, with, with uh, lace and different materials. A lot of little bakeries, which was cool. Nice. Yeah, beautiful village. That's one of the things I like about going to Europe. It's something that we don't really have here in the States is where you can just go out in the morning, walk down the street, pick up a baguette or and some juice and some chocolate or something like that and have like a really, and just have a sit down and just enjoy your morning. It's just, it's a very different flavor than you have here in the States because you don't really have that ability to just randomly walk around unless you go to like a Starbucks or something like that. I mean, it's, and it's really kind of corporatized at that point. Yeah, for sure. And, um, and everything's so far away here, you know? Yeah. I mean, you might have a downtown area in your city, you know, that you could walk down, but it's kind of limited. You know, there, their entire village is, you can walk around the whole place, you know, within a couple hours yeah. and, uh, and visit everything they have to offer pretty much. The other follow-up question I wanted to uh, ask you really quick, because our viewers may not be really familiar with that. What exactly is a Michelin rated place? Uh, I mean, most people, when they think of Michelin, they think of tires, not the restaurants. <laughs> so can you tell our viewers a little bit more about that? Yeah, well, they definitely should look it up and, and, and learn a little about it, especially if they're traveling. Uh, you know, Michelin is an organization that rates restaurants and their quality. And they only do it to like high, high end, uh, fine dining restaurants. So a chef that earns a Michelin star is pretty serious. You know, like Gordon Ramsay has seven of them, you know? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So th these are, these are like the best chefs in the world. Excellent. Yeah. Very cool. Okay. So <clears throat> let's then talk about your itinerary. So you're obviously planning on going to a lot of places to eat some really good food throughout Italy. Right. Where did you decide to go post Venice? Okay. Well, from, from there, uh, and we traveled from these, from city to city on the train, mm -hmm. oh, nice. um, which the train, it, I mean, is cool. Anywhere, anywhere you go, is pretty much cool to, to ride the train. Uh, but <laughs> they're not all created equal. Uh, efficiency is very different in different countries. Japan, that train is there exactly to the second, to like 10 seconds of when it says it's going to be there. In Italy, no. Nope. <laughs> it may be there. It may be early, it may be late. It may not show up. It may not be marked. You know, you just got to do the best you can. Um, but for the most part, it was, the, the, I mean, the, the public transportation was way better than it is here. Absolutely. So you can get everywhere. So we took a train from uh, Venice after our three days were up to uh, uh, Bergamo, which is in the Lombardy region of Italy. And we spent a lot of time in Northern Italy. Okay. Um, so this is kind of like, I don't want to call it country, but you know, it, it's uh, like a village feel. Yeah. And it was beautiful. The people there were so friendly. I mean, they were far more friendly than they were in Venice, you know, because there's so much tourism in Venice. Yeah. Uh, and this is, there's a lot of locals just going about their business there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they're, uh, they're really friendly to everybody. Uh, you're walking down the, the, the cobblestone streets and there's bakery, you just smell the bread and it's like, oh my gosh, this place is wonderful. You know, uh, the church is there were incredible and it, you don't have to be religious to appreciate some of these churches they're like extraordinarily beautiful and uh i refer to my my notes here here because uh, <laughs> i i definitely can't keep it all in my head like sonia can but there was a a, a couple things that stood out there in bergamo uh one is the basilica santa maria maggiore and it was it wasn't the biggest church. It was huge, but you know, in Italy, these churches are massive. Mm -hmm. But this one stood out to us as the most beautiful. And we saw a 
bunch of churches that you know we'll talk about through the, the trip. Uh, but this one, there was something about it. I mean, just from the statues on the outside to the inside of this place, it was it, it kind of took your breath away. You know, the the size of it, just that humans could create something that beautiful back then with handheld tools. You know? It wasn't very large though. Uh, did it have like tapestries or did it have paintings inside? What made it really? Yeah, it had tapestries. When I say it's not large, I'm comparing it to some of the huge cathedrals in the bigger cities. Yeah. This is still a humongous place. Okay. You know, I mean, what, probably my 2,000 square foot home could fit in there, you know, five, six, seven times, <laughs> you know, and uh, the ceilings were all really high. Like I had to wear my glasses to see the uh, the um, statues and, and uh, paintings that are up at the top. Oh, wow. Yeah. So a be beautiful, beautiful place. Um, another cool thing there is gelato. They had a gelato shop that was famous. Mm -hmm. And we went there and had, uh, I never can say this right, but they, they have a vanilla chocolate chip gelato called a uh, scacciatella. Scratchatella, and it was Scratchatella. Uh, yeah. Okay. And it was um, it's amazing, creamy, <laughs> delicious. Gosh, I couldn't believe it. Like, blow you away. And also, I like black cherry, uh, you know, ice cream as a, as a kid. And they had black cherry gelato that was oh. the I've ever had. Like, we talk about thrifties, like it's something special. It was nothing. <laughs> <you know? laughs> so, uh, that was really good. Uh, we took a, uh, what was that thing called? Trinecular? Funicular? Yeah, it's like a cable car. Okay. And it, yeah, it starts at the street, which I thought was kind of odd to see something like that at, at street level. You know, you expect to see that like up on a ski, you know, lodge or something. Anyway, that took you way up the mountain to this uh, famous Michelin star restaurant. And it was called, uh, let me see, uh, Bretto di San Viglio. Yeah. And man, I tell you what, you walk in and it's like got this real old world feel. Like everything's wood inside. And it's just like, wow, this place is beautiful. Bottles all over the line in the walls. And it just seems like you step back in time, mm -hmm. right? Like all of a sudden it's the 17th century or something. Um, and, uh, there's little differences in, in the United States. Like everyone hangs their coats up in the same place and you know, nobody worries about them taking stuff. You know what I mean? I, I like that. That was kind of cool. Um, the most memorable thing there, well, there's two things. One is the first time we tried a drink, a cocktail called a spritz. Oh yeah, that's a big thing. Yeah, right? Did you have that when you were there? I, you know, I had it the first time I went to Rome. It's it was refreshing and it was cool. Um, but for me, I'm in I'm into a little bit harder alcohol like grappa, and so that is that is hardcore compared to grappa is like paint thinner. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, um, <laughs> most people don't think I am drinking a heavier stuff, but that's why I don't drink too much. That's so, uh, <laughs> so but for people who but for people who want to know what spritz is, uh, tell them a little bit about that. Yeah, spritz is, um, gosh, I got to remember the, uh, the, uh, it's like an orange drink, isn't it? Well, it has a very specific thing. I know we got, we got it here somewhere in, in my notes and I'll, I'll find that and tell you about it. Um, oh, here it is. It's, uh, Prosecco, mm -hmm. uh, wine and Aperol. Aperol. Yeah. And I mean, it's just super refreshing fizzy like just make you feel good drink you know? <laughs> as really nice to get started because one thing when you're in a nice restaurant in, in italy you're there for a good three hours yeah you don't expect Experience. to dash and dine no it ain't or dine and dash it doesn't work that way like that table's yours for the night they don't book they don't double book tables so they're not going to say okay you're here from eight to nine and then the lewises are here from nine to ten it doesn't work that way yeah you get that one table for the whole night nice so you just relax you know expect a chill which is something that's uh unusual for americans you know because we're used to them wanting us out of there as quick as possible you know 
let's go on to the next thing. So yeah. anyway, there was the spritz. And then they serve you, um, you know, just warm up courses, you know, like appetizer courses. Uh, and you don't have to order those. They just come with the meal, right? Like maybe like a bread dish or whatever. And then they offer you a couple little tidbits, some bites here. There was a gazpacho, like a, I may not even be saying that right, but it's a- No, you like, are, you are. Yeah. It's like a tomato soup, like a yeah. real big tomato soup. And it had whipped ricotta cheese on it. Yes. Really? <laughs> it was almost like Cool Whip. Like when I first saw it, I'm like, ugh, like what? But it was cheese. And that was one of the best things I've ever ate in my life. Oh my gosh. We now, were, was, it served, was it served hot or cold? I mean, the, the soup itself. It was cold. It was cold, like most gazpacho. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so yeah. they served this whipped ricotta on top of it? Yes. Yes. And it, it, uh -huh. blew me up. it blew me. I was amazed by it. And I tell you what, that was worth the trip there just for that. If I would have left that restaurant after that, it's not have been fine. You know? <laughs> Uh, it, it overshadowed the main course, you know, <laughs> but uh, no, it was, it was a great place. And that was, uh, I think, was that our first or second Michelin style restaurant that we went to? If you and, include the one at Verano, that would be the second one. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to keep track of them in my mind. Well, and how was the view up there? Did, I mean, you guys traveled to the top of a mountain, I would Yeah, assume. well, it was, at, it was at night, so. Oh, okay, so. I don't know how the view is, but I'm sure it was pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, we walked around a little up there. It was like a little mountain village up, up top. And I think there was like an old castle type thing. Nice. Uh, not like a traditional castle like you'd see in England or whatever, but there was like an old building that it was just awesome. You know, there was fog and it was just real cool. And how long, how long were you here for? Yeah, uh, we were just in Bergamo for one day. Okay. And then you get back on the train and go to somewhere else next? Yep. Then we went to Lake Como, which is uh, uh, where George Cooney lives. <laughs> uh, and you see Lake Como in a lot of uh, uh, movies. It's a gorgeous place. Mm -hmm. It's a lot, you know, a lot of the colorful homes on the side of a mountain, you know, overlooking the lake. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you, you take... Uh, kind of boat taxi things are around there. Um, <clears throat> we uh, took a ferry to Bellagio, which we all know in the States, we know Bellagio is the, you know, the casino in Vegas, right? Yeah. Well, it's named after this island in Italy, mm -hmm. Lake Como. Uh, there's a bunch of islands there. So we went to that one and it was, it was a beautiful place. Um, it's like a kind of a, a hill, I guess, this yeah. island. And there's, you know, beautiful little colorful homes all the way up it. We took uh, a staircase that went all the way to the top. And uh, there was a nice restaurant in there that we, we, another Michelin star place that we had a meal at and, you know, enjoyed it. We walked around, took lots of pictures. Did you have the name of this specific restaurant? Uh, no, nah, not this one. I, I didn't keep track of that one because it wasn't one of the standouts. Oh. It was good. I know... Uh, you know, Sonia had like a fried fish dish there. It was really good. Like they fried the whole fish. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. Oh, and uh, by the way, just for my viewers, I've known Billy probably for, gosh, we've known each other for about eight years now, I think. And you have very high standards as far as your food goes. I mean, you, yeah. you, know, your, you know your stuff. So I just well, want to say you're coming from a very high place of understanding. And right, right. So when I say it was amazing or good, it, it's, yeah. It'll blow you away. Yeah. Uh, I met Sonia about 10 years ago and she was already a world traveler. So she kind of turned me on to the, the finer things in life and, and I uh, accepted it wholeheartedly. So, <laughs> um, yeah, let's see, what else did we do there? Um, in Lake Como, I mean, we spent three days. Uh, there's a ton of cathedrals there too and they're, they're gorgeous. They're all beautiful. Um, uh, I got my hair cut in Lake Como, which, what? yeah, this is kind of a, a, an odd story, but it was, it, I was worried, right? Because as I said before, I speak Spanish. So I really, usually when we go on trips, we work hard to learn the language. At least, um, you know, just greetings and how to get around town and how to like say excuse me and ask questions and, you know, be, be respectful of the culture. But 
and we did we did a little bit with with uh, Italy, but I figured, and this is another mistake, uh, American mistake, is always heard that uh, Spanish was so close to Italian that you can just understand each other, mm -hmm. and that's not true. It's absolutely not true. I mean, some of the words are the same, sure, but not enough to where they understood what I was saying. You know, you could speak Spanish to them, and they'll look at you like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> they actually spoke German more often. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they'd either speak, uh, you know, most of them spoke English and, and Italian, or they'd speak Italian and German or, uh, or whatnot, or all three. Uh, but very, I met one person there that spoke Spanish. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. So, oh, where did you say? Where did you stay while you were in Lake Cuomo? Lake Cuomo. We stayed in another apartment. Okay. Again, uh, you know, Sonia found these great places. Uh, this place was called the uh, Terrazzo Rivola. Okay. And it was a, a very spacious uh, two-bedroom apartment with a washer and dryer. Uh, unfortunately, I washed my passport here <laughs> oh man and completely ruined the uh, magnetic strip which uh i'll tell you about a little bit later uh, created yeah, some problems down the road yes it does. which problems that i didn't know were coming so we'll, we'll make sure that the viewers know oh, fun about. adventure waiting to happen um <laughs> <laughs> uh, but oh the haircut oh yeah sorry i go to get my haircut of course they don't speak a lick of english they don't speak a word of Spanish. So other than, you know, Google Translate helps a lot. You know, you can do that. Um, but I just went ahead and trusted the guy, you know. And it was the oddest haircut I've had. Uh, it was like a boutique shop. And the guy was very clean cut. He's very hipsterish, you know, the beard and the, you know, hair. And he took a long time to do this and he was styling so he cut it and then styled it like he's combing it and blow drying it cutting and combing and blow drying it and i'm thinking what the heck <laughs> are you doing like i've never had american barber like comb and blow dry and do all this stuff yeah. i tell you what man i should have uh, sent you some pictures on this to throw up on the screen it was the best haircut i've ever had oh man <laughs> and we you know didn't really communicate other than a couple words here and there did it cost uh, you, though, like serious money? Yeah, yeah. It cost me about $50 American. Well, I mean, again, like, you get more too, so. I was looking fresh. Okay. The rest <laughs> of the trip. <laughs> and I use those pictures to show barbers here. Like That's what I was going to say. You go, know, here, I want to look at this. See this? I want to be this guy. <laughs> and they can never match it, no matter how good they are, yeah. Uh, it was it was pretty awesome. So that was a good experience, because I was really worried. I thought he was going to jack my hair up, you know? Uh -huh. <clears throat> nope. They, they're definite crafts, craftsmen there. Uh, actually, everybody, it seems, uh, overseas really takes their job seriously. You know, yeah. they're not just punching a clock. Like, that's what they do for a living, you know? So, yeah, that, that, was, a, that was a great experience. Excellent. And then uh, another pretty awesome thing. Now, we went to this very high-end artsy restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. Like a very, very nice, very pricey. Um, Is this one of the Michelins? Or? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. And uh, this place, I could never say this right, but it was uh, Itigli in Teoria. Okay. And when you got your, your dishes, they were works of art. And they were undef undefinable. You couldn't look at them and say, oh, that's this, that's that. It was hard to tell what you were eating. Oh, you know, right. <clears throat> but it was delicious. Like one thing looked like a stick. It actually looked like a stick. But that was the best thing I ate then. It was delicious. I still don't know what it was. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but it was amazing. Um, and <clears throat> the end of the meal came with this. Uh, it, we were kind of making fun of it, to be honest because it, it didn't sound that great. It was uh, like a grape, um, what do you call that with it? It's a uh, sorbet. Okay. Grape sorbet, right? And we're just like, okay, whatever. Oh my God, this, it exploded flavor in your mouth. Like I've never had a sorbet like that. 
that must be what real sorbets are. I, I don't think that people in the States, unless you've gone abroad, really understand the level of the level of food culture that's outside of the United States. Like for me, the pinnacle of stuff that I've had here in the States, again, depending on the cuisine, like if it was just pizza, like the best pizza I've ever had has obviously been in New York City. Uh, the best um, Mexican or barbecue has been in the Southwest here. Um, but man, Italy has food like I've never experienced. I can't even describe it. I don't even know how to describe it. Right. It's just one of those things, it's like you, you experience it. And what I'm about to tell you guys is some people won't believe me, but I've heard of this phenomenon happening and I never believed it was real that you can eat a certain level of food, certain quality of food, mm -hmm. and you'll get a high from it. As if you're, you know, smoking marijuana or something, I, right? I, I've, I've heard of something like that right. before. It, yeah. So I just thought urban legend, right? Like yeah. there's no way. We experienced it this night at this place. <laughs> we both felt it. And neither one of us even, we didn't even have wine that night. Wait, you're in Italy and you're not having wine? What's going on with you, man? Yeah, well, see, at this point, we're, we don't really drink, you know? So, and we don't know much about wine at this point. So we didn't even bother with it, you know? Plus the place was extremely expensive. Oh, you know well, I mean? It's like a glass of wine. <laughs> you know, so we were already like, wow, this is, you know, we're, we're, we're experiencing this place. You know, so we're like, okay, with the price, but it, it was, you know, it was a pretty hit, big hit to the wallet, right? It sounds amazing, though. Yeah, so no alcohol or drugs or anything anywhere near us, and we are both high from this food, and I'm just like, I, I wouldn't believe it unless I experienced it myself. Excellent. That actually happened twice in Italy, you know, and I'll tell you about it, you know, then, then, in a bit for the next time. Okay. Um, let's see, what, what else there in uh, Lake Como? Okay. Well, uh, from there we went to, uh, we left Lake Como mm -hmm. and uh, we went, well, you know what, before, before I say that, we, we were staying in this real cool area right in the middle of town. And there was like this little I don't know what you'd call it, kind of like a deli type spot okay. underneath this that this Middle Eastern dude uh, uh, operated. And he would make burgers and fries and, you know, like little, little pizza. Um, and we had the, these really great fries there. And I also got introduced to Harissa. Harissa, what is Harissa? Harissa is like a uh, red pepper sauce. It's like, because I love hot sauce. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people know this about me. Like I have, yeah, I always have hot sauce on me. I got, you know, hot sauce in my bag swag, right? My, <laughs> my desk at work, everybody knows where the hot sauce is at. I put it on absolutely everything. So I was asking him about hot sauce and they're looking at me like I'm crazy. No place has hot sauce there, hmm. you know? Uh, so I asked him, yeah, some, some hot sauce or something. He's like, no, but I, yeah, I, he showed me this stuff called Harissa. And it is a Middle Eastern red pepper paste. And uh, it's delicious. It I, mean, hot, I, I suppose. I mean, yeah, it, it's kind of, but you know, if you like spicy stuff, you'll like it. So it's a good substitute to ketchup or whatnot, but it's, it's amazing. I, I now have Harissa in my pantry just <laughs> yeah i'll go to middle eastern does it, give you the, does it give you the sweats that sometimes people get from that type of stuff or i mean when you're used to it now but oh okay you know come on you, it's an acquired taste i guess but it, it's delicious awesome cool uh, so yeah we spent three whole days there okay um and you know we went out on some like uh the boats and you know did a little cruises around the 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 area there, right? And Lake Como is supposed to be beautiful. It's it is. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And you can just chill on the boat and like it's a tour. Mm -hmm. So then um, we left there and we went to Milan. Oh. Yeah. Nice. 
and we were in Milan for uh, two days. We stayed at uh, uh, the Straff, which is a, a very nice hotel. It's a member of Design Hotels. Okay. You've heard of those, yeah. So, you know, very, very, very good service place. Uh, it's right next to the Duomo. Oh, yeah. That. That's the, uh, the largest cathedral in Italy, the fourth largest in Europe. It's the one with uh, all the spires on it. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and we took a tour there and, and uh, you know, we went all the way up to the top. And it, I mean, just blows you away that humans could create that back then. Uh, Mussolini back in, the, you know, his time, I guess he, he uh, <laughs> did some modifications to it, with, which uh, angered some of the people. I can uh, imagine. <laughs> Yeah, he put uh, some statues up. He put his, uh, his own face up on it. Uh, but it, it was a small, it was a very small statue and it's up way up at the top. So, you know, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't too bad, I guess, for a, you know, dictator. Yeah. <laughs> now, for people who are not familiar with Mul Mul uh, Milan specifically, it's a, it's a big fashion center. In yeah. Europe. So, I mean, there's a lot of things where they may be, you have that mix, you have the ancient, buildings that are there but you also have a lot of modern stuff there as well correct absolutely so i mean from what i always understood it's like the fashion capital of, of the world you know milan you know kind of leads the the world in, in fashion um and yeah they have these old structures with would they protect furiously you know they have uh anti-terrorist groups in uh armored vehicles with machine guns standing outside of you know yep. It lets you know, don't, don't mess with any of this stuff. <laughs> um, and then they have like the biggest mall I've ever seen with like Gucci and, you know, Armani and all this kind of stuff. Um, yeah, really expensive, real, really expensive. And uh, when we were there, like I said, we were there for two days and I experienced the opera for the first time. Yeah, tell me about that experience because you said that was something that you were really looking forward to. You got your best duds on and stuff like that for that. Yeah, so we, you know, Sony had planned this way out in advance. So I knew we were going to this place and uh, it's called La Scala, which is like the most famous opera house in the planet Earth, you know. Uh, it's super old um, and just very prestigious place. It's called La Scala. I, I don't remember the name of the... Uh, <laughs> the opera we saw but it was something about this uh old man living by a river and he was like um tormented by spirits and I, it was i couldn't even understand what they were saying uh they have like translation things i couldn't see them where i was sitting i didn't it didn't matter yeah like it was so beautiful but i enjoyed it no no matter what you know yeah and, their expression, their acting, and their, it, was, it was so good. Like, I understood what was going on, you know? Because afterwards, I read everything it was about, and I was like, yeah, you know, I got that. I understood that. Uh, it, it's a great experience. Like, everyone yeah. should go to an opera, even if you're not that type of person. I never really consider myself that type of person. You know, I'm definitely not very cultured, <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah, but, but funny, funny you say that because it seems like Sonia is pulling you in a much more cultural direction and, and global yeah. direction. So uh, yeah. did you guys get opera glasses while you were there? I'm sorry? Did you guys get opera glasses, binoculars while you were there? Um, or did you need them? No, no, we didn't. Okay. We didn't need them. Um, yeah, where we were sitting, we were sitting up in a box. Okay. Uh, so they were, they were really good seats. Yeah, you know? so. Yeah, yeah. And it's just the way it's lit, like I don't see how anybody would need those glasses unless they had problems with their eyes. <laughs> uh, there was no problem seeing stuff. Uh, okay. cool. We also went and saw The Last Supper. Okay. And Very uh, famous painting for anybody who's, who's not familiar with it. Right, right. And I learned some things that I had no idea of, like it, that wasn't the only Last Supper made. Oh, there's there's other versions of these famous paintings that we hear about over here, like Michelangelo's version or, you know, you know, I don't know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> whatever the, you know, all, all the famous Leonardo da Vinci yeah. did one in this, you know what I mean? Like everyone has their version and just some of them are more, more, uh, 
famous than others, but it was, uh, it was pretty amazing. It was huge. And the fact that it survived what it survived during World War II, it was bombed. Oh, and wow. Three quarters of the building was destroyed. Um, and a ton of paintings that were in there, the murals were destroyed as well, but that one survived. Mm -hmm. And if you see, you know, they show you what the building looked like after the bombing and it's like, well, how did this survive? You know, they're just so lucky that, that it wasn't lost forever. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. Uh, it, it also surprised me it wasn't as detailed as I thought. Like the versions we see like online or whatever or in books, that's not the real version. You know what I mean? They're, they're enhanced. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So, I mean, it's still, it's still beautiful. Oh, it's yeah. still like an amazing work of art. It's just, it's not that crisp, clear, you know, uh, detailed thing. And for the, for the viewers out there, I don't want you to get a misimpression that you shouldn't go to see these works of art, even if they are not as you may expect. For example, I went to Paris a few years ago and we saw the Mona Lisa. And the Mona Lisa is not, it's not very large at all. So, I mean, don't, yeah. be, don't be disappointed when you sit, get to see these things because you're not just looking at them for the art value, you're looking at them for the historical value that goes along with this as well and understanding yeah. all the things that that has gone through in this process. So I just wanna relay that to my, to my viewers as well because again, they may not fully grasp that through this whole process, so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everything we saw, I'm so glad that we went and saw. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, eh, eh we, we didn't need to see that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, it's just be prepared that it's not going to be the same as what you expect it to be. You know, like I, I, I realized a lot on this trip that, um, you know, <laughs> what we learn about the rest of the world in America growing up, it isn't the, the, the truth or the full truth. You know what I mean? Uh, or it's skewed. You know, so, but that's kind of fun because when you get there, you're like, oh, this isn't what I expected. Yeah, yeah. And, then you're, and then it gives a little bit of a surprise or you, sometimes, yeah. you, sometimes you find things that you didn't expect. Like um, you were saying that in Milan, it was one of the larger, like they had one of the larger malls you'd, you'd been to or you'd seen. Um, yeah. and you guys are going to Thailand this year, right? Right. Are you going to Bangkok specifically or? Specifically, yeah. Okay. There is a the largest mall I have ever been to in my life is right there in Bangkok. It's called MBK. And it, it is basically the size of a full-size football field stacked six times taller. Wow. So when you have an opportunity to do shopping, uh, maybe on your last day there, I highly recommend going there. And by the way, bargain, bargain, bargain. You bargain for everything there. I got, I, I, I would get things that they had, like the price was just, insanely low and I got I got like 50% off that so I mean there's a lot of different things we'll, we'll touch more about that later on down the line yeah, for sure. um, while you were in Milan did you experience any other restaurants while you were there um specifically Michelin star uh no not the Michelin star but <clears throat> we had some pretty awesome like street food there uh there was two places in particular uh one was like a like a sandwich shop Okay. But they, their sandwiches are, uh, uh, it's kind of famous around the area too, but they're like Hot Pockets. Okay. okay. Right? Which, you know, not the nasty ones that uh, give you a tummy ache. No, no, no. <laughs> they're, like, they're real. They're delicious too. They have kind of a sweet bread and then they'll have like uh, uh, mozzarella cheese and uh, tomato sauce in them or they'll have ham and mozzarella inside. It's like, Oh, this is amazing. So I think the name of this place um, was uh, Pantorati. Okay. And that they are... Uh, is it a chain or is it just like one restaurant? I, I think it's just one, but it might be. Who knows? Okay. Uh, uh, actually, the name of the restaurant was uh, Pan, Panzerto and Luini. Okay. And, uh, well, maybe that might not be that uh, might not be right, but. <laughs> uh, but the important the thing was, was the pans are not really kind of sandwich, right? So, uh, you know, you can, you can find it from there, but I highly recommend that. That was pretty cool. And they were super cheap. You know, that was one of the cheapest things that we had that was really delicious. And everything over there is in Euro, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Euro at the time was a little stronger in the dollar, 
So you do have to be conscious of that, you know, like how much you're spending because depending on the economy and what, how strong the dollar is compared to the Euro or the franc or the, you know, wherever you're going, uh, the yen, uh, you might pay a little more or a little less. So and it's more expensive for us when we went because the Euro is a little bit uh, stronger than the dollar at the time. Yeah, actually, uh, I want to touch base on that for just one quick second. Um, and I know this is kind of a side note, but um, right now the dollar and the euro are almost identical. Uh, so right as making up this film or at the making of this podcast uh, or blog, it is about the same. But that being said, when you purchase things overseas, um, viewers, be aware that you're going to have a foreign surcharge if you are charging things to like your bank account or something like that. So just kind of be aware of that. The yeah. foreign transaction fees can add up a lot. I mean, you, you, it may not seem like that much, but after a while of doing all these different types of transactions all day long, you know, get, get this little hot pocket place here and this other place over here and stuff like that, you could end up spending like 10, 20, 30, $50 additional per day just in foreign transaction yeah. fees. So you're right, you're right. Where? So I, I recommend taking cash mm -hmm. and putting it in different spots on you, you know, in case pickpockets do hit you, you know, they only get a little bit. You know, if you put it, if you put your money, let's say you have a hundred euro you know, or 200 euro and you put, uh, you know, 20 here, 20 there, you know, you, you're, you're safe that way. Um, and you have the money you need to get stuff so you don't pay all those transaction fees. I, uh, <laughs> I actually um, added those up at the end of the trip and I was like, whoa. How much, do they, how much do they total up for you? Do you, know, do you remember? It was, it was a few hundred bucks. I'm you sorry, know, how much? Yeah, a few hundred bucks. Oh my goodness, yeah. We're talking about, you know, uh, pulling money out of the bank and things like that. There's transaction fees for that. And those are pretty significant. It's crazy. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to pull a decent amount. Keep it at the safe in your hotel or whatever. Um, and just carry a little bit of time on you. Um, I was being, I didn't want to pull a lot out of the time and have it on us, you know, just in case. Yeah. But I ended up paying a little more for that. Um, also, uh, the other thing there that was really delicious, there was a chain place, which, you know, we think chain places here are terrible, right? Yeah. There, they're not. <laughs> These places are fantastic. Uh, there's a place called Spontini Pizza. And it's just like a, you know, go in, stand in line, get your stuff, and you can stand there and eat it or have a drink, you know, take off. And it's like almost like a thick breaded pizza. Mm -hmm. And it was insanely delicious. <laughs> uh, we, we went back at least twice, maybe a third time. Nice. We were only there two days. So this place was, was amazing. <laughs> well, it sounds like you had a lot of fun there. Um, so where, so where was after Milan? All right. So after Milan, we went to this, oh, this place was, was cool. It's called Torino. Uh, it was the, um, place for the, uh, 2006 winter Olympics. Oh, nice. Yeah. And Torino is awesome. Now this was a place that we thought we'd like to have spent more time here, but we had no idea how cool of a city it was, you know? Uh, the Fiat factory is there. Mm -hmm. There is a uh, uh, famous chocolate place there too. Um, let's see, what was it called? It was, uh, nah, I don't remember what it was called. <laughs> Did you get a tour of any of these places, by the way? What's that? Did you get a no, tour? No, no, no we, we didn't do that. Okay. We, we didn't go do that. We, we contemplated it, but, uh, but we decided, you know. We'd rather experience more of the local life, you know, than in the factory stuff. Um, we did uh, uh, find another drink there, and it was called Bicharine. What is it's that? like coffee, chocolate, and cream. Uh, some places had alcohol in it too, but I, we preferred the one without the alcohol. It's called this Bicharine. place was delicious, or this, uh, this drink was delicious, and you can get it anywhere. So we stopped a lot to get that just when we we're walking around town and just to see, it was fun to see whose was better, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> um, it's kind of like their thing there. It's yeah, like but everything over there is so good. And that's the one thing I can't get across to, I mentioned it earlier in the podcast here. The one thing I cannot get a, 
across enough is just the level of quality that goes into the food that's over there. It's sure. astounding and it's indescribable. I, indescribable. I think yeah. we're doing our part in order to best describe the experience that we had when we were going through and, and eating over there. Yeah. I don't really know that there's anything here in the States that comes even close to it. Yeah, it's very difficult to, you know, I mean, we could do one of those food channel. Oh, it, the saltiness, the crunchiness, but that really doesn't, you know, the experience is what, you know, what I'm trying to explain to them, you know? Yeah. There, there was also some cool things here. One, one was lack of tourists. Like it wasn't a tourist city, you know? So you're really just hanging out with locals when you're there. Mm -hmm. It's cool when you're going, you're eating at, there's no touristy spots to eat and, and stuff. It's all local you know, goodness. Uh, we stayed at a really cool uh, place there too, which is, I thought it was odd, but it was cool odd. It's like a hotel, but instead of hotel rooms, there's apartments, hmm. like bedroom apartments in there. Okay. Yeah, so that was really, really cool. And we, uh, we made sure, Sonia made sure that they had a washer. So we, we tried to make sure that, you know, we booked a place with a washer every couple of days. That way we can take care of our clothes, you know, minimally packed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely, definitely important. Um, there was uh, an Egyptian museum there that was massive, and I was blown away by it. I, I just thought it was super cool. You know, the fact that they had so much Egyptian stuff was just wow. You know, I mean, Italians do joke a lot how they've uh, pretty much raided the world. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> uh, they're honest. They're honest about it. You know, and they definitely, uh, they definitely rated Egypt. I mean, the mummies and uh, just it was so cool. Well, it's right across the Mediterranean, directly, directly across from them. So I mean, it doesn't sure. surprise me. So this is also a place where we started noticing the break that Italians take during the day. Now, in the more touristy cities, they really don't do it. Yeah. But uh, everywhere else, they do uh, what's called a reposo. Which is basically like a siesta, right? Yeah, it's like a siesta. So from like, I don't know, uh, 11 to 2, maybe? Yeah. Uh, they just vanish. Their, their stores <laughs> closed. Like in clothing stores closed, like restaurants closed, everything's closed. And, you know, Americans were used to eating around that time. Yeah. Well, you know, there's been a couple of times where I was hungry thinking that I was going to grab something around. Nope. nope, nope. <laughs> Unless you go to nope. a convenience store or something to get a little bag of chips. But other than that, you know, make sure that you eat before, you know, you have a snack to take with you when you're running around. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> we also found another restaurant. I had told you before about the high we received at that one restaurant. Yes. And that it happened again, mm -hmm. but it happened here. Okay. We went to uh, the the locals that worked at the hotel told us, hey, you really want a, a place that we like, go here. It was down the street from the, from the place we stayed, which was uh, actually uh, Du Park Contemporary Suites. Okay. They gave a big shout out. They were fantastic. Good. Um, the service there was incredible too. They were really nice, made sure we, we had a, a, a good time. And uh, at this point, we actually rented a car too. So we were driving. Um, Ooh, I, I, yeah. the tr I had the roads over there a little bit dangerous to be on. <laughs> Yeah, I, it was fun actually it wasn't that bad it wasn't as bad as you think um australia was much worse <laughs> it was craziness uh, this was actually pretty cool um and uh the drivers were pretty for the most part they're pretty uh considerate here but anyways we walked down to this restaurant which i, I definitely want to uh, give you the name of this place um it was called la stadera la stadera oh my gosh we <laughs> And I'll tell you about another American misconception with this place. So we had, uh, we ordered calamari, fried calamari, and gnocchi. Okay. Okay. And both were just outstanding. But I had, you know, here we dip our calamari in marinara sauce. Yes. There you ask for that and they look at you like you got three heads. <laughs> what are you asking for? That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't do that there. Okay. Uh, that's an American thing. Uh, like spaghetti and meatballs. They don't have spaghetti and meatballs. Also, the concept of the spoon. I know a lot of Italian places out here in the Americas use a large spoon, uh, like 
I, I don't know why. It, it, it always seemed inconvenient for me, but I, I guess in Italy, that's not something that they do with their pasta or anything like that. So hmm, yeah. I, 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 I've not seen it over there in the three times I've been to Italy. No, not once. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of cool, though, to, you know, to uncover those misconceptions that we grew up with. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, we, we had this delicious meal, and again, we felt high, and there was no alcohol involved, nothing. We were like, what are they putting in this food? It's just amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely amazing. So from there, uh, we, we took off and uh, went to, uh, we drove to Piedmont or Piemonte. Piemonte. Piemonte is a gorgeous place in northern Italy. It's, it's in my opinion, I say it's what Napa in California tries to be like. Okay. It's Italian wine country, and it's gorgeous. By the way, are we still in Lombardi? Are we still in the Lombardi region at this point, or do we yes. move into Tuscany? Yes, yeah. Okay. No, no, it's uh, in Lombardi still. Okay. So it's at the, the foothills of the Alps, of the Swiss Alps. Okay. And uh, you could see them, which is amazing. They're, they're gorgeous. Anyway, um, we spent seven days here. And uh, this was part of our, our timeshare um, here. But it's funny because timeshares typically are, are fairly modest places usually. You know, uh, they might be nice. Uh, like you know, when we were in Bondi Beach, Australia, we had a real nice room, like in a hotel. Yeah. But... Uh, this place, uh, it was a like five star resort. Nice, it's gorgeous. You know, it's all made of brick and I mean, just absolutely beautiful. Like, it's just something you'd see in an old movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it was called the uh, Sunstar Boutique Hotel Castella di Villa. Okay, di Villa. Sorry. See, I try to pronounce it. <laughs> It's okay. You're, you're, you're among friends here, so that's all right. <laughs> right, right. So the double L in, in Italy is, is with an L. Yes. Um, so, uh, you know, we had our own car there. This is in truffle country, actually. Mm-hmm. That was like their claim to fame, you know. And it was white truffle season, which is really rare. I guess white truffles are. And they're, they're super expensive, too. Um, like we went to a truffle festival there. We had truffles for the first time, of course, and they're delicious. Mm-hmm. They're, they really enhance food, yep. you know. Um, they don't smell all that good sometimes, <laughs> but when you it's a mushroom, dude. <laughs> it's pretty much it. when you eat it's it, a really, really food, pretty mushroom. It's incredible. Like yeah. it really enhances. Um, again, Raposo was a big deal here. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we we did. A few things in the seven days. Um, we went to a winery. Mm-hmm. Now this is the point where we start to get into wine. Yes. Now we love it, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we we uh, we're staying at the the, the timeshare in this beautiful resort. Mm-hmm. Everybody there that week happened to be timeshare people. Nice. And they were all older folks. So we meet. <clears throat> uh, two different couples there that we're kind of hanging out with while mm-hmm. we're at the resort. We, we all have dinner together in this common room, which is really cool. <clears throat> and uh, they were really big into wine and uh, the one of the couples, and that's why they were there. They were buying cases of wine and spending thousands of dollars on, on wine and they knew a lot. So they kind of took us under their wing and took us to uh, Damilano winery and, uh, you know, we did some tastings and, you know, we, we learned a little about, about wine that week. It's and, interesting. Yeah. And we actually found our, our favorite wine that we drink now, which we're going to be drinking tonight, <laughs> uh, there. Cheers. <laughs> and it, how cool this is. We were in a restaurant drinking this wine. Waiter asked, how do you like that wine? I say, I love it. It's fantastic. He goes, good, look out that window. You see that hill right there? The one at the you know, upper left hand right there in this quadrant, blah, 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 with the tree that goes like this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's where the grapes for that bottle came from. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they knew where the grapes for the bottle came from. And you know, they, they knew who delivered it. And they, you know what I mean? Like they really take 
this stuff super seriously. They know their stuff. Yeah, they know their stuff. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Like you don't, you rarely find that type of dedication and knowledge here, you know? So I, I was blown away. And uh, this wine, uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's great. And we were, we were uh, ordering it from this place in Italy, you know, the, the winery, and it was costing quite a bit. And then the wine gods smiled on us, heard our prayers, sacrificed whatever we did. <laughs> and Whole Foods has an Italian, uh, what do you call it, sommelier? Yeah. Or whatever, I, I know I'm butchering that word. Uh, so no, you got it. You're, you're don't good. Don't me in the comments, people, but you know, uh, feel free to, <laughs> to correct me. Um, he ordered that wine. Oh. So the Whole Foods here in Arizona carry that wine. Oh, that's awesome. And it's, it's called a, a Viette. Viette. And Nebbiolo is the name of the grape. It's from the Lenghi region. Nice. And it's, yeah, we have it at least once, twice a week and just absolutely love it. Oh. And, it's only, and it's only like a $32 a bottle here. Yeah, so uh, amazing, amazing. That, that was like, we used to joke why can't we find it here at Whole Foods or someplace? You know what I mean? And then next thing you know. <laughs> Boom, there it is. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else happened there. Um, we went uh, on some day trips, of course, mm -hmm. there were seven days. So yeah. went on some day trips. Uh, we went to the Palace of Viennara, okay. which affected me, man. I, I mean, it touched my soul, this place. And I, I can't really explain why. Mm -hmm. uh, like I've never been a big museum goer, you know, uh, but I went in there and there's paintings lining the walls and there are, um, it's like a mini Versailles. Oh, place, wow. Right? Yeah. And there's histories next to the paintings and you also listen to a, you know, listen to like a tour of it. Right. Yeah. And just the history behind the, the pictures was extraordinary and the art was amazing. I, I don't know, there's something about looking at these paintings that were created so long ago. Again, it's like, how, how did they do this, you know? I wanna ask you a quick question. Um, and this goes back to the, con uh, to the topic of timeshares, because we have one too. Uh, we bought ours through Marriott, but we, um, like, just for my viewers who aren't familiar with the concept of timeshares, what yeah. we do is we have our home location, which for us is in the Palm Desert area. And then we go through a third party, in this particular case, it's called Interval International, where we can exchange that timeshare for other locations. I'm assuming you guys don't have a timeshare directly in Italy. You guys do an exchange as well, correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So okay. I work the same way. Okay. So, I mean, for, for those of you who are interested in understanding more about timeshares, you can certainly send me an email in reference to that, and I'll give you more information about that. But again, Thanks for bringing yeah. that up. Yeah. Um, so, we, use, um, we use RCI. So. Oh, yeah. RCI is a really big one out there. But if, you, if you don't know much about timeshares, definitely get with uh, the professor here <laughs> so he can help you avoid some of the pitfalls of, uh, of dealing with, with timeshares. Absolutely. Because <laughs> they can be great if you use them correctly. Uh, if you use it a lot and you travel a lot, they're worth it. Yeah. Uh, if, it if it's something you do once in a blue moon, don't bother. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a trade off to it. I mean, it's something where, like for example, we've had ours since 1990, so we've definitely gotten our value at this at this point. Uh, but there are fees that you have to pay per year. There's there's um, maintenance fees on the on the property that you have. There's taxes on it as well. So you just have to be kind of aware of those things. Um, but let's let's go back to you. Let's go back to your vacation really quick. So sure, sure. So, so yeah, more okay. uh, day trips that, that we took here. Uh, one thing we did that I thought was really cool, we went to this really cool town. Some places just have a good vibe. Mm -hmm. And we went to this place called uh, Bra. And um, wow. yeah, it's just a really cool little city. And it's, it was the home of what's called the slow food movement. Mm -hmm. And the slow food movement in Italy is like a, uh, it's like an anti-fast food thing basically it's they focus on locally sourced organic food cooked to perfection you know cooked with soul with heart with love uh you know no shortcuts 
uh, you know what I mean? Just good home cooking. Everything that the fast food industry isn't, right? Yeah. Um, and we went to like the little deli slash cafe thing where, where the movement started. Uh, and that was a, a cool bit of history there too, because we're really into organic foods and, and we have an organic garden. You know, uh, you know, Sonia's like the green guru. <laughs> the color. Um, I mean, that, that's helped me a lot. Uh, basically cured my diabetes, you know, with it. So, um, I, I mean, what you put in your body is, you know, very important. And they, they take it very seriously there. So, yeah, we, we went to this place and we had some, some food, like they had little pizza bread type stuff that was delicious. We bought some cheese because we decided, Sonia was determined that when we got home, she was going to make gnocchi. And um, so we got some really good cheese there. And that was at a great price too. Like cheese, I wouldn't, I couldn't imagine what it would cost here. Like 150 bucks maybe for, you know, like a quarter of this wheel of cheese. And It can get not, expensive. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember what we paid there, but it was reasonable. And it was super high quality, you know? So yeah, that was cool. A um, couple of restaurants I wanted to talk about. One was at the, the resort. Okay, so, um, you know, Castillo de Vila has a Michelin star restaurant in it. And, inside, uh, the, inside your resort? Yeah, yes, yes. Oh, wow, okay. And, uh, I mean, it wasn't cheap, but it was worth it. Okay. Absolutely worth it. So, you know, um, you'd go down for dinner every night, and it wasn't a, a menu that you got to pick. They served you, like, seven um courses okay and they would have it up on a like a chalkboard what you're going to have in italian so you, you know if you didn't know we were looking stuff up on the phone yeah you know, translating and normally that's not something i would be interested in but i'm so glad it happened because we had food that we probably would have never thought to try mm -hmm. and some of the best food we've had in our lives was there. Now, the whole reason we picked the Northern Italy in this region, Piemonte, in particular is because it has, it's tied with an area in France, a region in France, for having the highest concentration of Muslim star restaurants, mm. okay? And uh, yeah, this place would, they would just you know, bring you one course after the other of this amazing stuff. We had pigeon, uh, which is amazing. really yes yes and they're not New York City pigeons like <laughs> <laughs> you know toxic winged rats you know uh, these are they were, it was delicious okay. uh, we had guinea fowl mm. we had uh, venison um, nice. I don't like liver I never have but I had foie gras okay. and it was one of the best things I've ever put in my mouth <laughs> like I went into the kitchen. I was so blown away by it. I went into the kitchen and hugged the chef. Oh, <laughs> and, and it was like, you're amazing. You know, that's how delicious this was, you know? So yeah, a wonderful experience. And we, we sat, I mean, at our own table, but it was a big common area where everybody sat. So we got to know each other and talk and have fun. And it was actually in this, I don't know if you'd call it a basement, but it was an old, it, the, the, the buildings there had like, where they used to hang meat back in the day. Okay. Just the architecture is amazing too. Like these old buildings, they have brick ceilings. <laughs> like the brick goes all the way up and then it's like a concave brick ceiling mm -hmm. with hooks hanging out of it, you know? Uh, I'm like, like what's that about? <laughs> They keep the bricks from falling. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the, the miracle of, uh, you know, Archer. architecture. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, that was that was a great place. And then uh, this other restaurant we went and visited. Um, the chef was kind of a uh, famous guy for the region. Yeah. Again, I, I don't remember his name uh, offhand, but uh, it the restaurant was called. Locanda del Busco Grande. Okay. And 
we liked it so much we eat there twice. The uh, cool thing about this restaurant is they had truffles and trays and the waiter would come bring it to you. You'd pick your truffle. I want this one or that one because you pay by the ounce. Okay. <laughs> so make sure you didn't pick the bigger one or whatever. They're, they're extremely expensive, right? Um, and then but they're would, even more expensive here in the States than they probably are there in that region. I bet. I bet. But uh, anyway, they'd let you smell it and whatever. And then you say, okay, I want this one. I want that one. And then they would shave it over your food for you. Mm. And just, wow. <laughs> wow. But that's the restaurant where we found that wine we, we like so much. We also, uh, we took some people there, you know, from the resort. And uh, the owner, the chef, was so appreciative of that. I mean, these people out there were nice, like just super nice people. He appreciated that so much. He took Sonia and I down to his wine cellar to show us his wine collection. Nice. Which, you know, I guess he doesn't do with everybody or whatever. So we were pretty honored by that. And we got to see this, uh, it was a 400 year old building that his restaurant was in. So a 400 year old wine cellar, uh, it's just incredible, incredible. That, we were honored, you know? That is another thing that I don't think um, a lot of people grasp here in the States. Uh, you grew up in Southern California like I did, correct? Yeah, I grew up in uh, Oxnard, California. So, right here, Los so, like, some of the, so like the oldest buildings we have here are probably <laughs> maybe 100 years old. Then I remember moving to the East Coast a few years ago, and I remember seeing buildings that were like 200, 300 years old, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Then when you end up going to Europe or something like that, all of a sudden there are buildings there that are four or five, six, 500, a thousand years old. And you're like, yeah. and some of them even have like warped steps in some of the places that you go because people have been walking on these steps for centuries. Yeah. So that's the one thing I do want to impart to the viewers. Please make sure to go to some of these places and take observation of those things because it's, it's breathtaking to understand you're in history. You're actually experiencing this. And it's really breathtaking to understand how long this place has been here for. So again, thanks for sharing that with us too. Absolutely. You, you got to stop and smell the roses, so to speak. But it's easy when you're with a bunch of other tourists to just ignore that. But, you know, you think that people were here doing the same thing, you know, a thousand years ago or two thousand years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. It's uh, it, it definitely hits you in the, the heart there. Absolutely. Yeah. So I want to touch base with you on a few other things, but we do have to kind of wrap this up a little bit. So talk, to me, about, talk to me about the uh, how the transportation was back. I know you said you washed your passport. So was there a problem with passport control on the way back? Sure. Well, let me, uh, we got one more place to go. Oh, okay, cool. Let me, let me get through that real quick and then, then we'll go. Is that okay? Yeah, totally. Let's do because it. The last place is Rome. So. Okay. You know, oh, of course. Talk about Rome, right? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of two thousand year old buildings. Yep. So yeah, I'll, I'll make it. I'll make this quick. Uh, so yeah, we we uh, we ended up uh, taking a train to Rome, mm -hmm. and uh, we spent our last four days there. Okay. And um, I was starting to get sick too, which is not cool. Mm -hmm. it started it started coming on. I was getting a cold. Oh. Um, and we stayed at another apartment. Okay. Sonia set this up months in advance and we found this really nice uh, apartment right in the middle of, of Rome. It was right next to uh, the Spanish Steps. Oh yeah I and you know when I was recently there I actually stayed right next to the Spanish Steps and the Trevi Fountain also. So oh yeah, yeah. where you're at. Right and we went we, we definitely went there. Um, so this was called I'll give them a, a shout out because the, the, the girl was really awesome. Uh, she was running the place for her, her elderly parents. Oh nice nice person it's called the romanoff suites piazza di spagna mm -hmm. maybe <laughs> i might be saying that right uh but yeah we we went we saw the the vatican mm -hmm. we saw the pantheon which was a lot smaller than i thought it was gonna be mm -hmm. you know i just thought it was huge in my mind that it was a massive place uh and it was tall but you know it, it was definitely cool and i didn't know that it had an open ceiling Yes. That was odd. Yes. <laughs> I mean, you know, uh, and it was raining outside, but rain wasn't coming in. I, I couldn't figure out how, like, the engineering was so amazing. Like, it was, it was coming in a little bit, but not what you would think, you know? 
Okay. So, I don't know. That, that blew me away. <laughs> um, of course, the Spanish steps we talked about. Uh, we went to the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And for anybody wanting to go to the Coliseum, uh, you definitely plan ahead and be careful of the tours you get. Oh, yeah. Because they're not all created equal. You may get some where they don't let you go down in the bottom. Uh, you, you may get some where they don't let you go up to the upper levels. You know, make sure you get somewhere you can experience both of those because it is incredible, you know. And I've had friends say, ah, I don't know if I want to go there. It's so touristy. Probably, no, you, you got to go there. there. There's something about this that's extraordinary. You know, you talk about history. Yeah. You know, that, that's where you're going to see it. So we actually, um, <clears throat> through the epic system at work, Oh yeah, like a point system. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some uh, like tours for certain areas, but we didn't get one for the Coliseum. We we bought that one, but uh, you know, for some of the tours and for for taxi discounts and stuff, you can go through those. You know, if your work has a little <clears throat> discount system, you can you can get that. So we had a bunch of points, so we used them all on little little tours and things like that. Nice. So that, that was kind of cool. Saved us a few bucks here and there. Um, like I said, Trevi Fountain was awesome. Uh, I highly recommend them doing the hop on, hop, hop off sightseeing bus. Mm -hmm. You know, it takes you all over town. Uh, you, again, you got to watch out for the people selling scarves and charging stuff. They're going to attack yeah. you. Or uh, even or even trying to give stuff away to you because that might be a scam. So you got to be careful for those things. Yes, that happened to me at Trevi Fountain, actually. The dude, uh, dude gave me a bracelet. That, same thing with me. I was like, he started giving, he started telling me all this life story. Oh, I just had a kid and blah blah. blah. Same like, story. I just, <laughs> same out. story. I think they tell the same story. Anyway, yeah. I didn't give him nothing. I thanked him for the bracelet and, and see ya. <laughs> I, see, I just gave him back his stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. Just, just. By the way, since you were so close to the Coliseum, did you happen to also go to the Circus Maximus as well? Uh, no, we did. Oh, okay. Did. <clears throat> but. Uh, we went to the Galleria Borghese, which was pretty awesome. Okay. And uh, there was a couple of places there we ate that was really delicious, you know. But uh, another standout place here was a recommendation from Anthony Bourdain, actually. Mm. It's a pizzeria called Bonchi. And it's just a walk-up stand, you know. Mm. And uh, so you can't sit in there. You Maybe if the bench is open outside. This was the best pizza I've had in my life. It that's a that's a bold statement sir bold statement bold statement uh you know before then it was uh, uh you know tony's cafe in north beach in uh san francisco area yeah. which you know that that's italian pizza from you know he's from italy anyway but, yeah exactly um yeah this was incredible and the margarita pizza there was insane and uh Another misconception thing, you're not going to find pepperoni pizza there. No. It doesn't exist. No. <laughs> you're going to get prosciutto on your pizza, mm -hmm. which is kind of like ham, really good ham, uh, or salami. That's yeah. as close as you're going to get. Uh, around the corner from this is another place I just got to mention real quick. It was called Millennium, and that was probably the best gelato we had in all of Italy. It was uh, extremely delicious. And there are gelateria everywhere in Italy that's it's yeah. kind of like they're Baskin Robbins but it's just so much better than anything we get in the States you know you do have to be careful though the type of, of gelato um, if you here's a little travel tip for y'all if you walk into a gelato shop or gelateria and you see big puffy brightly colored gelato walk out that's not real gelato yep. real gelato is going to be look like normal ice cream basically it's going to be level with the little thing it's in yep. um, and that's what that's what the good stuff looks like so be careful of the fake stuff because it might not be awful but it's not going to be the experience that uh, the good stuff will be oh no it's awful i've had it okay it's <laughs> 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 they don't make it well it's just it's it's puffy it's but tourist, it's, right yeah. yeah it's it's not it's not gelato i mean that's what you want when you go there so right for sure for sure okay i mean uh ask away Okay, so you're getting ready, you pack up, you head out through, I assume, FCO for Rome. Um, how, is, how is the flight back to the States and what was the custom situation like? <laughs> well, 
here's where me washing my passport comes into play. Because, <laughs> you know, we have global entry, which I highly recommend for, for anybody. Absolutely. Uh, it definitely gets you past these, these big custom lines. But unless you wash your passport and jack up the magnetic strip. <laughs> so we were kind of pressed for time, too, I remember. And Sonia got right through. And then I got stopped because uh -oh. it wouldn't read. And I had to go stand in the line. Oh, oh no. Oh, my God, it's huge. And we barely made it because of that. Oh, no. But luckily, luckily we made it. So I was... I, I, I just recently did, uh, and in fact, actually, I just did two podcasts, and both people had global entry. I have global entry, too, and it's probably one of the best investments I've made. I think it was like, I want to say it was like 150 for five years. You, the only thing you have to do is go and sit down with Homeland Security, have a conversation with them, uh, yeah, of and it, it just makes for a very pleasant experience when you're coming back. You get through the lines. It, like, it, for, for those who are not familiar with LAX, it's crazy where I'm at. Yeah. And to get through a line at LAX in 15 minutes or less is phenomenal. That's a gift. Yeah. <laughs> it surely is. Yeah, Absolutely. LAX is crazy. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. So um, I, think, I think a takeaway from this is obviously watch your passport. Don't wash it because yeah. otherwise it's going to be really careful. And, you know, maybe even put your passport in a, a watertight container to keep it in, you know, mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, whether it's a, a sandwich bag or, or a specific container for it, uh, you'll be careful with, with your passport. Excellent. Well, um, really quickly, I want to ask you uh, just on a snapshot from this specific trip, what were the pros? What were the cons? What were some, like maybe some value adds or cost savings, um, things that you would want our listeners to know about? Well, I mean, <clears throat> the pros obviously were experiencing a different culture, you know, w with its food. Um, you know, we, we kind of took the, the l l path less beaten, you know, going in the off season and doing more things uh, around locals to try to experience, you know, Italy a little bit, you know, more. So uh, one thing I think is really important about Italy is <clears throat> don't skimp on the food go eat at nice places, you know, experience what they're really good at. You know, uh, this is the best fine dining on, on planet earth. You know, if you just go to, um, and I've had friends do this, that they just ate at like street food places or little shops here and there. I mean, you know, you're not going to get the experience, uh, that, that you want, you know, not the same experience. Um, so that's, that's a big thing. But I mean, there's great food everywhere. We, we stopped at a gas station on the side of the road called an auto grill. And you know, gas stations in the States, you don't eat anything there unless you have to. And then, you know, yeah. you're going to get a tummy ache. Yeah. Uh, there, it, they had like a gourmet sandwich shop in there. Yes. It was, I, we had a, a sandwich that had prosciutto and uh, brie on it. And it was one of the best sandwiches we've ever had. I had the same experience when I went to various different train stations when I was there. I had, I would get like an espresso and then with, or cappuccino and I would have like a croissant and it wasn't just like a piece of bread. It was like filled with like chocolate mousse or had marmalade on it or something like that. It was just, they know how to cook over there. They know how to bake over there. It's amazing. Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> and I tell people, just get out of your comfort zone. Go do different things, uh, eat different foods. You know, even if there's stuff you don't think you like in the States, there's a really good chance you're going to like it there. Mm -hmm. You know, like I wouldn't eat foie gras here, yeah. but there it was one of the best things ever. Um, you know, definitely I wouldn't eat a gas station sandwich here. Oh no, absolutely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we've all been through that. And it's like desperate when we were like teenagers and it's like now, no, we, we mind our health a little bit better these days, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, you know, to meet new people, to, you know, we went, in, uh, one thing in Venice I didn't talk about, but we went to a, a theater and watched a cellist, you know, mm -hmm. and it was incredible, you know, that's not stuff we usually do. Well, yeah, so, I mean, that's, that's not your typical jam. And I mean, I've known Billy for years and you know, mm -hmm. you're not exactly what I would call a classical music guru type. Right. Person. But when you're seeing it in like an opera or you're going to a place and experiencing it, 
in true life and it's part of the culture, then all of a sudden it takes on a new meaning. And this is a very different feel from what you had previously. Absolutely. I mean, I like, I'm an ex-boxer from, you know, uh, the streets of LA and uh, I, I like old school hip hop, you know, but here I find myself, you know, in a, in a nice suit <laughs> watching a, a amazing cellist, you know, and I'm like, wow, <clears throat> this is stuff I probably should have been doing my whole life, you know? So definitely get out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's see, cons? There's not a whole lot of cons. You know, oh. other, than, other than the street merchants, like, that's the only thing I could say was, was a problem. Well, the you know? length of the flight, though, was that, was that, would you consider that a con? or? Well, it depends on who you are. Like, I think Sonia didn't have a problem with the flight. She's, you know, she's very patient. <laughs> Me, I, I got the attention span of a gnat. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> for the most part, the flight was like, I mean, if I'm on a flight over in three hours, it's, if it's over three hours, I'm having, like, uh. But we, we combated that, right? We, uh, we downloaded that United app, and I watched movies the whole time, you know? So three or four movies into it and it was over, yep. you know, there, you can find, you can pivot, you know, uh, on pretty much everything. So the cons didn't really strike you that much. Um, do you think by having Sonia do all the pre-planning ahead of time, it was, it, it, I mean, it's definitely, some, I, I would assume that that's definitely a cost savings as far as that process goes. But oh, are, do you also find that there are vacations that you go on where you're a little bit more spontaneous, where you're like, you know what? we'll go to this place and we'll just take a taxi or rent a car and do whatever. I well, mean, how do you compare that? Planner and I'm the spot spontaneous one. Okay. But I, to be honest, uh, like sp spontaneous people, we always say, well, let's live by the moment and let's do that. But I'm going to be honest. I think her planning enriched this experience. Yeah. Because she's very deliberate with all these things and set them up in a manner to where we went from one cool thing to another cool thing, to another cool thing. We had rest spots like in between at certain points. Like she actually planned that out. Like, okay, we're gonna go hard for two days and then we're gonna rest a little bit and do, we're still gonna do cool stuff, but it's not gonna be as rough, you know? Not as much walking or, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna be on a boat for, you know, this amount of time or, you know, that's, the planning is, is super important, you know? I can tell you from my perspective, I am a planner like crazy uh, because mm, like when it, when it comes to me and my husband, he, he'll, he'll go wherever we go on a go and that's fine. But for me, I find that there's a stress level associated with if we get there and maybe something's canceled and then we don't have anything to do. And so that just becomes a little bit of a stress factor for me. But when I have everything planned out ahead of time, that burdens off my shoulders. It's like one less thing to have to worry about. Yeah. So. I like it that way, and I and I totally respect and understand that. So I appreciate that. And you'll have to you'll have to thank you'll have to thank Sonia for that on that as well because I appreciate the fact that she is so organized. Now, uh, for people who want to know a little bit more about your journeys and your travel, um, where would they find your information? I, I have your I have your YouTube site up here. Can the, is this the best place they can go for that? Yeah, that's the best place. Um, uh, we uh, we have a few videos up there from. Uh, uh, Australia and New Zealand <clears throat> on our Weeby channel. And uh, uh, Weeby, we got the name from the Ice Cube song, Weeby Clubbing. <laughs> so she and I will just joking around. We always say, you know, we be eating or <laughs> grubbing, you know, we be sleeping, we be chilling, you know, whatever. Uh, we be hiking, whatever we're doing. <laughs> so that's what we decided to name the, uh, the channel that. Um, so we, yeah, we have about uh, five videos up there right now. We, we have all the footage from Italy, uh, from all like seven cities we went to. And um, <clears throat> we just finished the Venice one. So we're getting ready to, to post that. So that should be up within uh, uh, the next week or so. And then we'll, we'll, you know, we'll put them on there. So if anybody wants to go check those out and kind of, get ready for the, the Venice one. You can check out our, our, uh, our previous stuff and kind of warm up, meet us, see who we are, and you know, see if you, you enjoy our, uh, 
our experiences. And I highly recommend their channel. It's very entertaining. The videos are a little bit different than this format, but the, it's, it's very cool. You get to see their adventures. You get to experience the culture. Uh, Sonia is an amazing photographer, and yeah. so you get a chance to see the videos and everything that's done up through that. You guys do a great job. I highly recommend it. It's at the Weeby channel located on YouTube. So again, thank you again for that uh, shout out. And we, I definitely hope that they'll go over to see that. Um, again, I want to thank you, Professor Perry, for visiting us today. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments, you'd, you can certainly respond back to this video. Um, or you can send me an email at scott at the professor travel. I'm always willing to address any questions. In the meantime, I want to thank my guest. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, again, uh, we hope to see you again sometime soon. Maybe we can talk about another one of your adventures in the relative future. I'd be really interested in knowing more about that. For sure. Um, Thanks for having me. Wonderful. And to all, my, to all my students, to all my adventurers out there, make every day a great day to travel. Until the next time, I am the Professor Travel. Have a wonderful day.